world The weather outside is not that cold And if you take my hand, I'll walk with you to Georgia Hello and welcome to Country with Celine. I am your host, Celine Shamarki, and today we are joined by the talented Drew Baldridge. Strong is weakness, my swear I'm bulletproof. I live on the edge, my rock I'm clinging to. My sweetest sin, my do me in my heaven, sin, hell, Mary. I'm doing good. How are you doing? I'm doing awesome. You know, you sound a lot like Luke Bryan, I have to say. I get that all the time. I get I sound like him. I get I look like him all yeah! the time. <laughs> that's pretty nuts. I just it just cued into me right now. <laughs> oh, that's funny. <clears throat> so let's talk about a song of yours that has completely gone viral. Everybody's talking about this song. She's somebody's daughter. Okay, so you wrote this song about your wife, Catherine. At the time, she obviously was not your wife. She was your girlfriend. Yeah. So explain, how was her reaction when you released this song about her? Well, this song, you know, it's kind of like the, the little song that could, I guess, because I wrote this song years ago. You know, I put it out in 2019 as a, um, you know, kind of an upbeat kind of radio song. I can't say that I ever really loved the, the way that that song was produced. Um, you know, I wanted to have more emotion and things. And so the song, when we wrote it, you know, I showed it to my wife and, and she absolutely loved it, obviously, you know, because I said, hey, this is how I feel about you yeah. kind of thing. And at the time, she was just my girlfriend. And um, we uh, we put it out. My label put it out and didn't really think much of it. And then we got married in May and uh, I decided I was going to go in the studio and create like a piano version because I always mm -hmm. thought it deserved kind of more of a broke down, let the lyrics do the talking kind of thing. And, and we did it. And uh, I put it up on TikTok as just like a, hey, you know, if y'all want this, I'll put it out. I think I even said in the post, like my first post, like, hey, if this gets 5,000 likes, I'll put it out, you know. And uh, in like a couple of days, it had about a million likes. And it was just all over the whole, you know, all over the, the, the world, really, honestly. I mean, I think the song got even like number eight or number nine in Sweden and all sorts of viral charts. And it's just been crazy to watch this song, have the moment that it has. And it just came from such a real place for me and, and for my wife of just, this is the song that they danced, her and her dad danced at our wedding to, you know, and then that sparked, you know, now I'm getting tagged in wedding videos every day of people using this song, which is really special. She's somebody's daughter. She's somebody's everything. She's somebody's little girl, even if she's grown up and moved away. She's somebody's whole world. She's somebody's baby. And if you don't treat her right, hers won't be the only heart you're breaking. She's somebody's daughter. I saw a post of yours on your Instagram. You ended up surprising someone at a wedding. I did. Yes. That's, I did. that's amazing. How was that experience? It was awesome. You know, and they were big fans for a long time. And, and we just, we've been out on this tour called the Baldridge and Bonfires tour. And I've been playing people's backyards all around the country. And so we're literally driving, you know, like this month, I think this is only like the month of July. We've only, we played, every day except like three or four and we're here almost the end of july now and so we've been playing every night july 1st through july 18th we played every day july 18 shows in a row and we've just been out on the road so much that when somebody hits hits me up on there it's like hey we have a wedding in this you know if i'm driving through it's like why not i'll stop in and surprise you all at the wedding and and that was really cool you know i got to stop in surprising the big been big fans for years and they cried and it was it was it was awesome that's amazing. That's exactly what Maroon 5 did with Sugar. Have you ever seen the video? They like went to maybe like five different weddings, but they recorded their music video there. But just to do that and to be an artist who can go to a wedding and have that impact on like the people there, it, I can't explain like how like amazing that must have made you feel. Your heart must have been so overwhelmed. Oh, yeah. You know, I think 
like this, the messages and everything about this song and so many songs that we put out lately, like, and we have another song called stay at home dad that we just dropped a little bit ago. And it just means so much, you know, the music that we've created in the last little bit has meant a lot to people. And just to see the messages when people hit me up and like, Hey, you know, I danced with my daughter to this song at our wedding or, Hey, I lost my dad, you know, last month due to COVID or whatever, you know, and this song makes me think of all the good memories of them. And, and it's just like, as a songwriter and an artist, that's what I wanted to do when I moved to Nashville. I a hundred percent wanted to create music that people could put themselves in and, and live their life in a song. And, and that's what uh, She's Somebody's Daughter's done. That's what Stay at Home Dad has done. And, and just the last couple of songs that we've put out. So it's been really rewarding as, a, as an artist and a songwriter. And now she's somebody's daughter, the wedding version, the video that you posted. Is that your wife in all of the little like home videos? Yeah. So I had this idea, you know, I had my video guy come in the day that I recorded and recorded uh, like the full day of, of me recording the song in the piano version. And then I had this idea of just like, what if I took Katie, my, my wife, what if I made, found her home videos? and uh, just went through them all and found some spots that really looked cute, looked like, you know, her growing up and um, went over Christmas. So I've been planning this for a long time, as you can tell. So over Christmas, we went up to her hometown and I asked her mom if she had any home videos and she let me take them all back here. And I just spent hours watching her home videos of she's one of six. So she has a big family of all their brothers and sisters growing up. And I just found some of the the clips that I thought were really cool, you know, of her being young and jumping in the water, or tumbling or whatever, and uh, went in and took them and got them switched over to a digital format. And then the, the same guy that shot our wedding video is the guy that shoots all of my videos all the time. And so we put them all together, her home videos, me in the studio, and of our wedding day, and kind of made this really awesome music video that I think will be, you know, the most... I can't imagine another music video being more special than this one that I'll ever create because it's just so real. It's our wedding. You know, it's literally the day from our wedding. Everybody in that video is people that I love. And it was uh, definitely special. That's a video that you would hold near and dear to your heart forever. And that's something that you would show your kids and they can look and think, oh, that's my mom and that's my dad, you know? Maybe yeah, that's true. Are kids around the corner for you too? Like since we're on this topic, who knows? <laughs> I don't know. You know, we've been asked so many times of, hey, when's when's the kids coming? It's like, well, I think Katie at least wants one before she's 30. So she's 26 now. So we got a while. All right, Celine, we got a minute. The wedding version on of She's Somebody's Daughter on Spotify got over 2 million streams. And the original song is over nearly 4 million streams. Like that's crazy so congratulations crazy. thank you you know and, and when we put this song out may 14th you know we didn't have any of those kind of streams on this song you know the song has been out since 2019 but i want to say it only had like a hundred thousand streams or two hundred thousand streams at the time you know so in this two month two and a half month period you know collectively on spotify amazon and apple and the youtube i mean we're well over 10 million streams on this song in a couple months and that has been I've never had a song do that, especially with no, uh, no playlisting. You know, this song doesn't have any like hot country playlists or any of these big, big playlists that are out there. Um, it's literally just people searching this song out and finding it and loving it so much that they want to play it over and over again. And um, that is, um, that's like any songwriter artist dream ever is to have your song streamed by millions of people, you know, and, and not only that, but in a couple month period, I just can't, I can't fathom it. It's, it's, what a blessing. There's something about the lyric of this song that requires an emotion. And um, the wedding version definitely pulls that emotion out. And I'll never forget when I got this wedding version back and me and my wife listened to it in, in the car for the first time. And, and she just started crying. You know, it was like, oh my goodness, this is amazing. This is exactly how I heard this song. And then she got to, we went up to Illinois where she's from in her little hometown and she played it for her dad. And I was in the other room and I heard it on the speakers and I was like, what is she doing? I walked in and they were dancing together, you know, and she was crying and he was holding her. And it was, uh, you know, it was really, really special. And I knew at that moment, like, Hey, this song is going to mean a lot to a lot of people. I just knew that it had that chance. And, you know, me not being, I don't have a record deal yet. It's just me by myself. And wow. I've never had a way to, uh, to get my music out to the masses 
you know, and so TikTok has definitely been an awesome tool to uh, get these, you know, these new songs that we've been creating to get them out to people and to be able to have the mass, you know, people judge us like, hey, what do you think of this? And all of a sudden it has millions of views. You know that it's going to react once you put it out. And, you know, I think we're over now 25, 25 some million of the hashtag of she's somebody's daughter on TikTok views. And so there's been hundreds of thousands of videos made to this song. And um, it has just been wild to see. That's crazy. That is, is insane. That song is so special in so many ways. And so many people can connect to that, like you were just saying. But another song that I really want to touch on is Stay At Home Dad. So that one's more so of your latest release. What's the story behind that? What inspired you to write that song? So my friends Tyler Chambers and Dylan Marlowe, who you're going to hear a lot of in the next few years, we've been writing songs together. And they're really talented young artists, young songwriters. And Tyler actually brought this idea and called Stay at Home Dad. And we were talking about it. And I was like, man, do you guys remember growing up like your dad leaving for work and you being like, dad, come on, let's go play baseball. You know, why you got to work? You know, and your dad being like, one day you'll understand, you know, like you got to go to work to provide for your family. And we just got talking about that. And, you know, I'm just getting married and we're talking about having kids one day. and I know I do the worst job possible for seeing family. I mean, I am on the road 150 times a year, you know, 100 to 150 shows a year. And so I know my, my kid one day is going to say, stay at home, dad. Why do you got to go? Let's go fishing. Let's go play ball out in the back. You know, me and mom are going to miss you bad. And like, we just got talking about all that stuff. And this song kind of all just came together, you know, and my dad, he worked two or three jobs to make sure we had everything we ever wanted growing up. And I know there's a lot of dads out there that have sacrificed a lot for their family. And, and this song just kind of goes out to them. You know, I put it out on Father's Day to kind of have a, uh, a special meaning to all the dads. And just to see the reaction, the messages that I've had about this song has been really, really special. You know, like, hey, I lost my dad just a couple months ago. And and this song really takes me back to the moments we played ball out in the back or we went fishing together. And, and that is uh, what music is supposed to do. Stay at home, Dad. Don't you want to go fishing? Throw the ball out in the back. If you do, I'll do the dishes. Be your mom. First time I watched the video, I don't know if you've seen it yet, Swain or not, but I bawled my eyes out. You know, it is the video is so good. Well, Whale Tail Media, um, Wales Tony is the guy that owns that. He come out and direct it all, and he just did an amazing job. And and he just he works really really hard at making sure the video says what the song is telling it to. And um, this this video that he did really did that. When a song resonates with me, I always love to tell the artist and stay at home dad. I have to tell you this because on Country with Celine, we like to get up close and personal and I like to share personal stories as well. Um, I was at work and I was going through like new music and stay at home dad. I stumbled upon that song and I lost my father. So I'm going to add on to one of those stories. I lost my father in October of 2019. So when I hear songs that remind me of my dad, I just stop everything and I listen to it. I'll ball my eyes out for a little bit. And then like, I just hold that song in such a special place in my heart. And I was at work, I bawled my eyes out. I'm like, oh my gosh, how am I gonna continue going on with my day right now after hearing that? Because there was one, there was this one line in it and I wrote it down so I wouldn't forget. You said, Years grow wings and fly on by. Everybody's here to say goodbye, but I don't know this world without you in it. So please give me one more day, one more minute. That had me in flat out tears. It, that song drew, honestly, from my perspective, just listening to that song as a fan and just as a human, it connected with me so hard. And I'm so, so 
so I'm gonna cry. I'm so grateful that you po you that you released that song. I really am. So I just want to say thank you for that. I, I really really appreciate it. Oh, thank you. You're gonna make me cry. I got tears I'm, in my eyes. Right I'm now. sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, no, it is good. I mean, that's what music's for. That's why we're on here. It's why we're on this podcast because you know I think we're in a time right now where you're gonna start hearing a lot more real music coming out. And this is a song that I knew when we wrote it that day, we all kind of cried a little bit, you know, and it was like, oh man, this is going to mean so much to people. And when I was in there singing it and I would play it, my, my producer, he just became on the other side of it. He just had a boy, he just had a son. And this is his, you know, when I sit down, I'll never forget sitting down and be like, Hey man, I got this song I just wrote yesterday and we don't have it finished yet. Do you want to help me write the bridge mm -hmm. and uh, produce this? And I played him that, I told him the title. I said, it's called Stay at Home Dad. And he like looked at me like, oh, is this going to be like, oh, dad sitting around the house cooking? And I was like, no, just listen. And I played it for him. And he just got tears in his eyes. And he's like, oh my gosh, like that is, that's me and my son, you know? And me, and I think about my dad. And so when we uh, started talking about people that are players that are on the record, all these guys were dads, you know, the guitar player, the drummer, we found people that would, that it would really hit home with that would feel the song and feel the sound and, and feel the lyrics. And, um, I just really appreciate you saying that Celine. That's why we made this song was for people like you. So, um, I just love that it meant so much to you. That just makes my heart smile. So thank you. It really did. It really, I had to tell you because I, I couldn't sit here and not talk about that song and <laughs> not mention that because it, it, it's an amazing, beautiful song. It really yeah. is. And now, Drew, let's get to know you a little bit more. So tell me, where did you grow up? So I grew up in a little town in Southern Illinois called Patoka, and um, it's a town of about 500 people. So I graduated high school with about 22 kids. Um, before moving wow. to Nashville. Yeah, really, really small. And I grew up on a family farm there, my grandpa farm. So we did, you know, corn and beans and we had about a hundred, hundred and some head of cattle, 120 some head of cattle. And um, so growing up, you know, as I spent my summers on a tractor and um, spent summers with my grandpa eating bologna sandwiches on hoods of cars. And, um, you know, I just, I love my childhood so much. And growing up, I didn't realize that I was living a country song. You know, so all my songs that I write and things come from those moments of mm -hmm. being on a tractor, hearing my grandpa tell his old jokes. And, um, you know, I, my grandpa passed away a couple of years ago. And so it's just all those memories just flood my just thinking about how I grew up. I love it. I was very blessed. Grew up in a small town. And um, this is the I didn't know, but this is life I always wanted to live was that, you know, and now I'm in Nashville. I miss my little town where I come from. So hopefully one day. I'll be able to get on the outskirts of Nashville or go back home where I can have some acres and, uh, you know, get back to the, how I grew up. Cause it was, uh, it was a special place. So you're the true definition of a country boy. Eh? Hey, Hey, hey. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I told you it was going to come out. I told you. <laughs> There's a Canadian. Um, yeah, you know, I, I think so. You know, I don't like to put, too much of a tag on. I guess I'm a de definitely a definition of a small town kid, you know, I'm, yeah. it's, it's in me. It'll never go away. My family still lives there. When I go home, I, I love it. And, you know, I, I just, I hope that I get to raise my kids in a, you know, very similar way because yeah. it was a great way of growing up. I think farming and music, I know it sounds so different, but like there's so many hardships in farming, you don't know what's going to happen along the way. Like you plant these crops and you put them in the ground and you hope something grows. You don't know if the rain's going to be right. If you don't know if the temperature is going to be right and you just do it anyway, because you have to do it and you love it. And you know, you hope that you have yield a great yield and music is kind of the same way. You know, you write these songs, you put them out in the world. There's so many roller coasters of like, Hey, is this person going to put it on the radio? Is this person going to put it, you know, on a playlist and there's hardships along the way, but no matter what, it's just all hard work. And, and that's what makes you succeed is hard work. And I learned about that at such a young age of just like, Hey, you work hard, even if you're not getting paid, you know, if I didn't get paid with my grandpa, be like, grandma's gonna make you lunch. You know, it's just like, you just go out and bust your butt and work hard in life and whatever you're working hard at, you're going to see return on that. I like that comparison. I, I really do. Because as a farm 
child, right? Can I say that as a farm child? Growing up on a farm, okay, growing up on a farm. Did you like wake up at like 6 a.m., like the typical, like kind of what you- I mean- Like, was that, is that a thing? I mean, yeah, waking up early. I, I mean, I remember if I would sleep in like in summers at like 8, 30, 9 o'clock, my grandpa or my brother would be calling me and wow. just wearing me out. Like, really? What have you been doing all morning? And it's like, I'm just sleeping, you know? And I just remember those those memories very vividly of like, you know, you got to get up and get at them. Hey, we need X, Y, Z done. And, uh, you know, obviously I wasn't, I was the youngest. So I just kind of got all the easy, hey, you go disc, you go rake. And, and like the easy jobs, I wasn't planting. I wasn't, you know, in the combine harvesting. I was just drive the wagon guy, disc guy. I mean, the simple things, I was the baby of the family. So it was just kind of like, hey, whatever we don't want to do, we, we give the easy jobs to Drew, you know, because he doesn't really know what he's doing. So I was just told all the time, this is what I need you to do. <laughs> that is the benefit of being the young child. The young yeah, child. It is. You, you're the one that gets loved the most and put on That's that true. pedestal. <laughs> it's so true. Uh, and now I was reading up on your bio. So you moved to Nashville and then you decided to take a trip back home and like kind of figure out more so like if you wanted to, I guess, pursue this career or the kind of route that you want to take with your music. So what did you just like discover when you moved back home? You know, I think I was my first record. We kind of just threw a bunch of stuff together, not threw it together. We were just trying a bunch of different sounds and things. And, you know, that came out the songs like dance with you. I don't know if you heard that. That was our first song we put out to radio had horns on it. And uh, we have another song on there called train. We had a bunch of horn music and it was a lot of fun. We love playing it live. And then um, I was out working really, really hard on this record, promoting it. And then uh, my grandpa and grandma both passed away and uh, I went back home and uh, spent some time with my family on the farm and uh, just really thinking about the kind of music that I want to make and um, the kind of I start thinking about the legacy, you know, like my grandpa left such an amazing legacy in our family of, of hard work and how to treat you know, the girl that you're with and, and how to love somebody for 60 years and, and how to raise a family and the legacy that you leave behind a family, that that legacy goes down to the next generation. And uh, I just got thinking about what legacy do I want to live? You know, what kind of music do I want to put out there that is going to impact people that will go on for generations and, and be timeless? And that was turned around and being my first release from that was a song called middle of nowhere kids that uh, was all about growing up in the middle of nowhere but being proud of it well i can tell you that hearing songs that can connect with people rather than kind of hearing a song as a, just a partying song like even though they're fun because don't get me wrong it's a lot of fun so many more people can connect to it so many more people listen to it then it the meaning behind it is even stronger um and people remember those songs they become timeless essentially they they really do were you surrounded by music like your life like was somebody influencing you musically wise well my dad um he always sang in church growing up so he was part of quartets yeah. and things and he was a tenor in a quartet so when i was i was playing music since i was kindergarten and my mom put me in piano lessons and then started singing live in person about first grade and in church and in Christmas programs at the school. And, um, you know, I think uh, just my dad being loved singing so much. And we used to, he has these old tapes of like the cathedral. You won't know some of these, but like the cathedrals and the Gaithers and the Statesman Quartets and all these gospel groups. And we would just drive down the road and I would sing all the bass parts, you know, there and just try to yeah. get down there and sing them, you know, <laughs> this old house and everybody no longer. And, and just like, there's such a good tie to gospel music and country music that people don't even realize just with the, I mean, the guitars and, you know, the storytelling and, and things. And even there's so much Christianity in country music and, and very open about it. And so, you know, my dad being a singer, I always sing with him. He would tell me now, Drew, that is not you're off. Like you're, you're sharp, you know, and then he would show me the right way and then I'd do it. And, um, on my first record, we actually had a song called It Is Well With My Soul, which is a, um, which is a gospel hymn um, and uh, that I used to sing in church all the time. And I had my dad come in and sing on it with me. And we put a, uh, 
it was on our first record on Dirt On Us. It's called It Is Well With My Soul. You can YouTube it. And it has my dad and my uncle, my dad's brother, who sang too. Wow. And they sang the harmonies on the song. And we put a YouTube video together of us singing it all. And um, it was cool. I got to sit in the studio and, and be on the other side of the, of the glass and tell my dad, hey, dad, that was off. You sharp. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and he's like, oh, the times have changed. <laughs> yeah. What he used to say to you, now you finally got back to say to him. <laughs> yeah, it was great. So Drew, who would you say would be your dream collaboration? Because it seems as though you've listened to a lot of different genres uh, growing up. So who would be the dream collab? Man, I don't know. You know, now I think after, oh, I mean, Eric Church would be pretty awesome or Brooks and Dunn would be, I mean, I got a lot that I, wow. that I would love to collaborate with. Okay. I mean, I think Dolly Parton would be amazing. Wow. You know, like yeah. that would be, that would be insane to be able to say you have a song with Dolly Parton. Like, I just can't imagine that. Um, but yeah, Brooks and Dunn would be another one that I, you know, grew up listening to that I think would be like, whoa, I'm singing with Ronnie Dunn or Kicks. This is awesome. Yeah, you know, of course. So I just have so many of them that I think would be so cool. <laughs> yeah, I don't think anybody could actually pick just one person. Yeah. It's always going to be multiple. You can't just pick one. So now, Drew, we're going to play a little game I like to call Country with Celine Rapid Fire. So I'm going to shoot you out a couple of questions, and then okay. Anson will take it from there, okay? Sounds like a plan. Okay, so what was your first job? Um, like actually making money? Actually making money, yes. I, I started uh, mowing grass when I was 15, and so I started like this grass grass job where I'd go around town with my lawnmower and just mow people's yards. <laughs> <laughs> you know that's smart at the young age too that's really smart thinking yeah yeah my dad had this old lawnmower and he let me put it on a trailer and just drive from house to house it worked out pretty good perfect yeah it really did um what is your favorite show like netflix show or like netflix show or a show that you've seen on tv that wasn't on netflix like any show what's your favorite goodness i don't know you know i i really got into suits there for a while. I don't know if you've yeah. seen that. Oh, uh, it was filmed half in half in Toronto. Okay, of course. Okay. It <laughs> I really, really loved that show. I watched all of it. It was pretty good. But I don't know. I, I really like far fetched kind of stuff too. Like there was a show called The One Hundred that was on Netflix. Yeah. I don't know if you've seen that. Oh, yeah. um, you're like you're just like my wife. You're like, oh yeah, yeah. I can't stand that stuff. Um, <laughs> I, my wife's the same way. But I love that. I, I like stuff that ain't like of this world too. You know, like makes me just think about so creatively different. And, yeah. you know, when I watch stuff like that, it helps me in my songwriting and helps me to think outside the box a little bit. Yeah, those shows are very outside the box. So it would help you. <laughs> how, how about Manifest? Have you heard of that show, Manifest? Loved it, watched the whole thing. <laughs> watched it? <laughs> Loved it. Okay, I watched season one and then I was like, I can't do it anymore. I just See, like, we, we couldn't go to like movies together because I tell you what, Manifest loved it. That's my kind of stuff right there. No, see, I'm more into the rom com. That's me. Okay, see, I don't even know what that is. You can't even. I don't. Romance and comedy. Like, oh, like, rom com. Okay. <laughs> Jeez. It's, it's a yep. girl thing. It's a girl thing. <laughs> um, what's your favorite place to travel? Oh man, I love. We played a few shows over in Australia, and I really, really love it over there. Just the people there and. the you know, just the vibe and just seeing someplace totally different, you know, and understanding a whole new culture. And it was just, we've been over there twice now and playing shows and I just really loved it. And I always look forward to going back. That's awesome. I've always wanted to go to Australia. That's like on my bucket list. Yeah, I should. Yeah. How about a, a dream like destination, like Bora Bora, the Mel Dives, like where, where would you fall for that topic? I want to go to Italy. That's like my dream. Um, I I'm just, Italian, so. Oh, there you go. Yes. <laughs> I just want to go over there and eat food. Like I love Italian food so much. Pizza. I mean, lasagna. I mean, it don't matter. Just give me something with some red sauce on it and I'm in. That's what I'm all about. Oh my God. I love my Italian culture because we make the best food and I'm not being biased. It's so true. <laughs> it is. It's so true. Um, your most embarrassing moment. Oh gosh. I don't know. You know, I think, uh, you know, I played the Grand Ole Opry for the first time, and um, I was singing a Josh Turner song, 
and Josh Turner came out on stage and surprised me, which was awesome. And I was so blown away by it. Yeah. And I just remember he started singing. So I quit singing and I was just taking it in, you know, and like looking out the crowd sold out and I'm just standing there. And then he says, take it, Drew. <laughs> oh, no. And I forget every word. I have no idea where I'm at. I don't know what I'm doing. I just know that I'm on the Opry and this is awesome. And he's here and I'm, I just say on the microphone, uh, I don't even know where we're at anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and the band had to play it, take it to the end. So now like every time I play the Opry, I am so stressed that I'm going to forget my words. So, but yeah, that was, uh, oh, and also I, I messed up. Uh, this was more embarrassing. So it was in, it was in Michigan, Lansing, Michigan. So not too far from you there in Toronto. Yeah. Um, so they told me when I got there that everybody that opens the show is me. And um, I think Brett, Brett Eldridge was headline in the night. The Runaway June was on it and a couple other acts. And they said, hey, whoever opens the show has to sing the national anthem. Oh. And I was opening the show. And so I ain't sung the national anthem since I was in high school. And so I was so nervous and I was just sitting side stage. Like, I'm not nervous about singing. I'm just worried about messing the words up because there's just a lot of, yeah. you know, not your normal words in the American national anthem. And so I get on stage and there's 7,000, I think 7,000 people there. This time it was a minor league baseball stadium and it was completely packed. And so I'm singing the national anthem. And at the end of it, you're supposed to say, and the home of the brave. Yeah. And it is just not coming to me, the words. So I get all the way to that spot and I just stop and the whole crowd goes and the home and I'm like of the brave, <laughs> but it was still, it was so embarrassing. I messed up in front of 7,000 people. And then I had to go out on stage and perform a full show, you know, cause I was opener of the show. So I sang the national anthem, walked off, the band comes on. Then I walk back out and I'm like, here I am. I just messed up the national anthem, but here I go. <laughs> you know, I'm pretty sure all those people probably thought it was like set. How, that's how you were going to do it. Like leave the last bit for the crowd to sing, you know, maybe that's what they were thinking. Maybe. I had one guy come through the meet and greet line afterwards though. And, and he said, you know, he said, I can forgive you if you go up on stage during Brett Eldridge's show and apologize to the crowd. And I said, man, I said, I'm not going to go up on stage during Brett Eldridge's show. It's his show. Like, I'm not going to walk up there, grab his microphone and say, everybody, I am so sorry that I messed the national anthem up. And he was like, well, I just can't, I just can't forgive you then. I just can't forgive that, that you would mess our national anthem up like that. And I said, sir, it wasn't my goal to go out there and mess it up. Like, I was trying really hard to do it right. And sometimes you just get nervous and you forget the words. You know, everybody's human. We make mistakes. And and so I'll, I'll just never forget that. He just walked away from me so mad. He's like, well, I can't forgive you. I'm like, well, I'm sorry. I, I'm i trying. <laughs> you should tell him to get his butt up on stage. Yeah, you know? yeah, no joke. I'm sure he'll forget the words. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And then I got two more, and then we'll take it from there. Um, So your favorite quote. Oh, man. I think uh, my, my publisher told me this one time. He said, uh, losers – focus on winners and winners focus on winning. And I think that's a really, really cool quote. You know, as we get caught up sometime on Instagram or comparing yourself to others all the time, Hey, they have a bigger podcast than me. Oh my goodness. What am I doing with my life? Their songs are bigger than mine. Why are, why am I not where I'm supposed to be at? And, and we can go down that rabbit hole so much and, and think about, you know, X, Y, Z of why I'm not succeeding instead of, Hey, I'm just going to do me and I'm just going to focus on winning over here. And that's what, that's your winner status, you know, is, Hey, if you're over here, focus on every day, this is my goal. And I'm going to try to reach it instead of being like, what are they doing? You know? And I think that's such a cool quote to live by. No, it, it really is. It's hard to live by that. And we all know it's hard because you start comparing yourself to so many people. And like you said, you go down that rabbit hole so fast and so hard, but you just got to remember never to do that. Just no. never. That is the worst thing you can do because then you just, you stop believing in yourself or whatever you're doing. You have no faith in yourself. It's just, you think your life is done. Like, what am I doing? Then you try to think of a different job that you want to do. Like I've been down that rabbit hole multiple times and I'm sure you have too. Oh, it's, yeah. it's human. It, it's just normal. But that quote, yeah, 
you got to live by that. Okay, so last one. What can we expect from you for the rest of this year? So we're going back out on the road. Pop finally getting ready to announce some full band shows, which is exciting. Um, but we're also, we've been doing this Baldridge and Bonfires tour where I've been just literally posting on Facebook or Instagram saying, hey, who wants a show in your backyard? Yeah. We will come and play. And we've done right now, by the end of August, we've played about 130 of these in people's backyards around the country. Wow. And so we have so many people that have sent me messages and sent me comments that want shows in their backyard. Um, and so we're going to try to fit some more of those into September and October, a few more. We're not going to do a whole lot more because um, we have full band shows coming in. Mm -hmm. But that's the plan to play live some of these Baldridge and Bonfires, which have been so much fun. I literally eat dinner with the family. We hang out. We play music for about an hour and a half and uh, then just hang out the rest of the night. You know, it becomes a, a special night for them to have an artist that they love in their backyard and singing their favorite songs. And um, it's a story that, you know, I've learned on the business side of it that no matter what, you know, we're out here creating friends, not fans anymore. We're creating relationships and, and that's been a lot, a lot of fun. And, you know, I just yesterday got some new masters back for a new song. And, and so we're going to be putting out some new music, um, probably a few more songs before the end of the year. And that's kind of been my goal is just try to put at least a song out every couple of months for this year and with a video to it, tied to it too. And um, so be on the lookout for brand new music. We have some songs that I'm really excited about that I think uh, you're going you're gonna to love. We're all excited after hearing that. We are all excited. So Baldridge and Bonfires, correct? That's now, the tour. Do you, do you guys travel to Canada? Is that a thing? So we haven't, we would, you know, we 100% would travel to Canada. And I've had so many people reach out to Canada from Canada. And it's like, hey, will you come play in our yard? And I'm like, 100%, let's figure out how to do it. We just haven't had um, a way to figure it out because I don't know still if we're allowed to travel into Canada yet. Um, that's been such a, a weird thing is that we're allowed over the border. Are we not? I don't know. So we just haven't booked those yet because it becomes a hard thing. Like, oh, okay. Americans are coming over here and screwing Canada up, you know, <laughs> but, but we're trying to, we're trying to figure that out if that's a thing. And, but if, if you know anybody that wants one, you hit me up, Celine, we'll make it happen. I, I, I maybe I want one. Maybe <laughs> I want one. I think we're going to make this happen. Um, August 6th. I'll say that August 6th is when apparently you guys are allowed to come. Oh, okay. To That's exciting. That's a good thing to know. Yeah. I think they just announced it maybe a few days ago. Um, but we're still not allowed to come to the stage, which, which is really weird. I don't know. Like you guys are allowed to come here, but we can't go there. I, I don't know. It's, it's a whole, it's confusing. It really I is. know. I don't, I just try to just focus on what I'm doing and yeah. I, like all that stuff is just crazy to me. So yeah, it, it, that's a whole other topic for another day. We'll yeah. that. <laughs> anyways, hopefully we can get you out here to Canada sooner rather than later. Um, my backyard, that's probably gonna, what's gonna happen here, Drew. Um, but thank you so much for joining me on Country with Celine. It was such a blast chatting with you. Uh, thanks so much for having me, Celine. I really appreciate it. And hopefully we'll be able to see you down the road in Canada, in Canada sometime. Yeah, hopefully I'll be able to see you in Nashville sometime. Yeah, come on down. Strongest weakness. I swear I'm bulletproof My lips